Hello, 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 everyone. Thank you for tuning in. I am Jay Lee. This is Jay Lee's Corner. This is my review for Love After Lockup Season 2, Episode 1. Man, I'm so happy this show is back on. This show is ratchet gold, okay? Um, I'm mad that it's on on Fridays and I have my lives on Friday, so I don't watch it until Saturday. I'm thinking about moving my, my lives to Saturday, um, the week after next, you know, I don't know, I'm gonna have to see how many people watch this video, if not, if it makes sense for me to move it, because, you know, Married to Medicine is also on Friday night now, but hell, the, the, the finale coming on next week, so I may not need to, um, but if you have not done so, please take a moment to subscribe to my channel and become a whole Jaybird, okay? Hello, hello, hello to all my Jaybirds. Do not forget to like, comment, and share this video to always hit that notification bell. Do not forget to shop my Teespring merchandise, hoodies, t-shirts, sweatshirts, mugs, all that good stuff. The Girl the Fuck Buy shirts are available on Teespring. Make sure to hit the link below. P.O. Box also if you want to send me something. You can if you want to. That um, the P.O. Box address is also below. But yeah, Teespring merchandise for sure, for sure, for sure. Go get you a girl the fuck by merchandise. Yay! So, this season of... <laughs> this is what happens when you up at 5 o'clock in the morning. Reviewing because you fell asleep too damn early and you woke up too damn late. Um, you're knocking shit over. Anyway, <laughs> um, this season on Love of the Lockup... Girl, girl, the ending, Lord Jesus, the ending. I was like, bitch, oh Lord, it's going to be good this season. But we're going to start with Caitlyn and Matt. So Caitlyn and Matt. Matt has been in prison for two years for possession of firearms and stolen property, which means he sounds like a whole little robber, okay? A whole little robber. Now she's 28, he's 32. Now, they have been, now he's been in prison for two years, okay? Two whole years. They have been dating for five months, and they are engaged to get married. I'm like, bitch, what? After five months? Girl, you must be desperate. Um, so, you know, she brings up how, yeah, when he get out, I'm going to find him this dick's ass. I'm like, girl, does it matter now? I mean, you wet girl by, anyway, she look, you know. It's just weird. So, you know, she brings up how she found him on Craigslist. She's like, I came across this little ad, like, on Craigslist for, you know, a pen pal. I didn't know people in prison was, like, reaching out via social media sites looking for pen pals. I do get people who are, who've been gone for a long time or whatever. They want to, you know, have communication with people out in the outside world because they might not have anybody. And I don't think there's anything wrong with a person. You know what? I'll, I'll become friends with this person. But I'm like, but you become like an all right girl. Anyway, <laughs> you know, she says, you know, I just the first um, when I saw his picture, I was just so attracted to him. And I mean, the pictures he posted did look cute. I mean, I mean, they weren't prison bay cute. Like, prison bay, Jimmy Meeks, he was really cute. Um, but I was, even the dude Garrett from last season, he was really cute. But I mean, the pictures they showed of him, I mean, they look cute, but I'm like, they ain't all that. So, you know, we see her as she's talking. She's in the process of moving out of her mother's house, okay? She lives with her mom. But her mother does not approve of her dating him and have him in her house. She's like, I don't think you should be dating a man in prison. I think it's crazy, 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 or whatever. You should not be doing it. You can't do it up in my, not in the words, fuck, not even, not in my goddamn house. So, you know, since she has decided uh, to, Caitlin has decided to move out. Um, she brings up how her, when she was younger, her mother was on drugs. So they, they lost a lot of time because the mom was in Ohio, whatever. So she's like, I feel like, you know, she should be supporting me now because she was gone and wasn't really around when I was younger. So I wish she could accept it. 
Um, I don't think your mama being on drugs is the reason for you to say that because she was on drugs, she should have accept me wanting to marry a prisoner who I've only known for five months. I'm like, those two dumb things, you know what I'm saying, don't even connect at all. Um, so because she's moving out, she don't have nowhere to go. So where did she plan to move to? She is moving in with his mother. Yes. The man she met on a Craigslist pen pal ad, she leaving from her mama house and she can't afford to get her own apartment or house or whatever. So she's moving in with his mother because if she say, I want to be able to lay with him under the same roof, but they ain't, they can't afford their own roof. So they, they brought her mama's roofs. Anyway, um, <laughs> my girl, but she say he don't know that that's where they're going to be staying. And I'm like, well, does he not talk to his mama? And if he don't talk to mama, how did girl? We don't know. So we then see her go and drive to the mama's house. We then find out she has never met his mother or seen her in person. The first time she met this man mother in person was when she came to the lady doe, bags in hand, homeless to move in. And they both at the door crying. I would have been cracking. I'm like, I don't know this girl. I mean, Caitlin could be a whole thief. She could be a whole stealing ass girl, okay? And you letting a whole stranger come live with you. But I, you know, it's what it is. Anyway, oh, we're going to both cry. I'm like, y'all need to get it together. Grow some balls now. Grow some balls. Now, she said, she said they've only talked over the phone. And the mama agreed to let her come stay there because she want to be with her son. And I'm like, it's just kind of crazy. But she said her, she says his mom has welcomed her with open arms and made her feel welcome even though her mom her own mother has not done that you know what i'm saying and they will be staying in his old room with his old photos of, of of when he was younger you know i'm like girl you know and the mama seems welcoming and whatever to to Taylor, but she gets real 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 quick like you know i want to be honest you know y'all don't really know each other this is his third time being released from prison. I'm like, damn, third time? Look. <sighs> Anyone who's been to prison three times, that's a lot. Like, jail. Like, oh, I got all this little jail thing. I went to jail. Because jail and prison is two different things. You can't be coming from prison the third. You can't be coming off prison the third time. We're going to get engaged and be married. I don't want to do it. Like, why didn't you stop the first or the second time? Like, how did you go back the third time? It's just kind of crazy. Um, she also brings up how, you know, her and Matt's father broke up when he was younger. And at that point in time, he started, you know what I'm saying, getting with the wrong crowd, doing the wrong things. And he got hooked on drugs after the parents split. So it was a tough role for him because he's also a recovering drug addict. And she brings up how he has these highs and these lows and he be coming and he be going. And sometimes when he be having these highs and these lows and coming and going, he always end up relapsing. And I'm like, girl, it's a matter of time. But Caitlin say, I'm down for the ride. You know what I'm saying? I'm a ride or die. I'm going to do what it I'm paraphrasing. But she did say, I'm down for the ride. I'm looking like, girl, why? Because you know where else to go? It's easy to be down for the ride when you have nowhere else to go. Okay? So we then see he calls her on the phone. And she's like, hey, babe, guess where I am? You're going to be so surprised. I'm at your mother's house. Yay! He's like, what? You're where? Are you serious? And he's mad. Like, he's upset. He's very, very upset, you know what I'm saying? And he like, because he's like, I don't know what's going on. Y'all been hiding things from me. You know, you can't be hiding things from me. And the mom like, you know what I'm saying? That's one of his triggers. He don't like people have stuff or whatever. And he gets frustrated very, very quickly. But she don't know that about him. And then he gets frustrated. And what does he do? He leaves and goes to get high relapses. So, um, he like, you know, you kept a secret from me. She's like, I didn't really keep a secret. He like, he like you just said... You kept a secret, and she did, um, but because she don't know him, she don't know those kind of words are his trigger. Why? Because she don't know that man, okay, at all. So, you know, Matt, the mama walked, I'm, I'm going to give y'all some time, some, some privacy. I was like, girl, this is my house. Go in the room. Go to your room. Talk to him. Go to your room. But, you know, she gives him some privacy or whatever. And then Matt, like, you know, I'm just so upset with you because you didn't tell, you kept a whole secret from me or whatever. And I don't know why you did that. What she should have said, well, baby, 
I just found out or I didn't want to tell you I had nowhere else to go. And your mama said I can come here. Because I'm like, basically, she's homeless. And she's homeless because of you. But I digress. You know, Matt didn't tell her, I'm not going to call you tonight. No, you still, we made a promise that we would, oh, I want some spaghetti. Uh, <laughs> I would, anyway, uh, we made a promise that we would never not, you know, have a nightly phone call. You know what I'm saying? You better call me tonight. You know what I'm saying? I better have my nightly call. I'm not going to call you tonight because you lied. You kept a whole thing or whatever. Uh, you better call me. And he hung up. Look, you can't be letting these men in these prisons get up under your skin. This man, she begging this man to call her from prison, even though he's supposedly coming home the following day. I would be like, you know what, you piss off, okay, good, but click, I would have hung up on his ass. And when he would have called back, I would not have answered the phone. Don't you be in these prisons hanging up on me, bruh. I would, I would, bruh, you won't ever talk to anybody, okay, ever. And she, I can't believe, he hung up on me. Girl, you giving the man in prison some power? Girl, your pussy must be weak, okay, weak. Anyway. So, next we have Scott and Lizzie, who were on season one. Okay, now, uh, Scott is 51, Lizzie's 41. Scott happens to be a white man, Lizzie happens to be a black woman, okay? And she has been in prison for nine years for multiple DUIs and bribery, yet she was a whole alcoholic. Okay, so Scott has now moved to Wisconsin because Lizzie is going to be paroled to Wisconsin because she wants to be closer to her daughter. Now, they have been dating for three years after he met her online on a prison dating website and, you know, in the... We know that she said in the beginning that he was a whole trick. Okay, trick, 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 trick or treat. And, you know, that she eventually grew feelings for him and he stopped being a trick. He became a treat and now he trick or treating. So, um, he, she, so she was supposed to come home last season, season one, but she didn't. She got some additional charges for some drugs. Okay. And she didn't get out. She ended up having to do an additional year. Um, so now she's getting out like in the next 15, 20 days or whatever. Um, so now he's looking for a house for them to live in there in Wisconsin. But I'm like, bruh, you broke and she a prisoner. Who gonna pay for this house? Who gonna do that, bruh? Who said that? Not the bank. Um, so, you know, I'm not sure what they gonna do. Because she come calling him as he's looking through this house. Um, it's like a three-bedroom house. Baby, does it have a pool? He's like, no, it doesn't have a pool, but it has like a lake. Well, no, we need somewhere for the pool. We need a pool. We need four bedrooms. And I'm like, but you're a, you, you a prisoner. And he broke. I'm like, how does a prisoner tell somebody how to spend their imaginary money? I just don't understand what's going on. And I'm like, and, she, and I have to approve the house. If you have to approve a house, but you in prison, you want to come home homeless? Girl, so she brings up how they should get a four bedroom house and not a three bedroom house because it's gonna be her, him, his son, her daughter. So that should be three bedrooms because they could share a room. The daughter has a room, the son has a room. But she says she wants four rooms because she's like, I'm a godly woman now and I don't feel comfortable. Um, I don't want to have sex with you yet because I don't feel comfortable. Um, being around a man because I'm godly now. Now, if I was high and drunk, you could get it. You know what I'm saying? But I'm not like that way. And the funny part is when she said to me, said, I don't want to have sex with you yet. The whole world is like, oh, let me exit stage left. And he went, he looked so uncomfortable. Boy, did he look uncomfortable. I was too. Now I'm just watching the show. So, um, but yeah, she said how she don't want to sleep with him yet, and she hopes he can wait on her because you know she's just not comfortable with that and whatnot. And I mean, I don't think what she's saying is wrong. I think some people do feel that. I mean, she hasn't had sex, and what we hope she ain't had sex in the past. Now we don't know what she's been doing in prison, but she hasn't been out in these streets, fucking in these streets for nine years, and she may be because again, he's only seen her three times, and the whole nine years she'd been in prison and the whole three years they've been dating so i mean he is a whole stranger but i mean like if you engage to a stranger you moving with that stranger i mean you gotta give him some coochie I, I, girl 
anyway, he like, you know what I'm saying, I don't mind. I do want to have sex with her. I don't mind waiting. So he tell her, I waited three years. I wait three more. You know what I'm saying, if need be. Okay, I want you to feel comfortable. Which means I'm not going to rape you. I'm not going to take. I'm not going to force you to fuck me. I get it. But let's hope we don't have to wait three more years. Um... He then say, and then the fourth room, cause so she wants to stay in that fourth room, and he says, and then once she's comfortable and they sleeping together, he can make the fourth room her walk-in closet. But you can't afford her no clothes because you broke. You're broke. Just broke. You can't afford it. We then see Scott meets her daughter, uh, Jasmine. Jasmine looks just like Lizzie. Just like, a younger version, of course, but she looks... Just like her. So she has not seen her daughter in 10 years. The daughter's 19. And Lizzie says, you know, at times she feels guilty. Um, or like her, the reason her mom's on jail, j- is in jail because of her. She says, because I feel like my mom was not ready to have a child. She was not ready to have me. And because she had me, you know, she had all these extra stresses or whatever. And I could be the reason she got on drugs. I mean... She's like, I feel like if I wasn't here, my mama wouldn't be in prison. I'm like, that's a tough burden to bear as a child. To feel like you're the reason your parent is on drugs because they just couldn't handle having a kid. I mean, you didn't ask to be born. You know what I'm saying? I didn't ask you not to use a condom. It wasn't my fault. Anyway, but she said she's happy her mom's getting out and she just wants to spend time with her. So, when Scott brings up how they're like all, all living the whole house together, whatever, and like one big happy family, whatever, she's like, um, I don't know about that. I'm I'm still getting to I'm still getting to love my mom because again she's been gone for ten years. I don't know you either. So you know what I'm saying I really believe that my mom should be independently living before she has anyone else else in her life. And Scott basically say, Your mama homeless. She like she don't have nowhere else to go. Like she gonna come home. I'm gonna help her do this, help her do that or whatever. Like we're gonna have a whole you know what I'm saying, I'm gonna be helping her because she ain't got shit, bruh. She homeless. And Jazz, like, you know, her mom is her main concern, not really Scott. And I'm like, that's a good thing to be. You know, she then asked, like, how much money have you spent on my mom? And he says, well, about $90,000. She's like, $90,000? And he said, you know, I don't know how much of that she spent. And she said, I'm pretty sure she spent all of it. Because we know in prison, you can't have that much money. I think in prison, you can't have more than, like, maybe a thousand. I don't know how much. I don't know. What, I don't know. I know damn well nobody in prison has a $90,000 uh, commissary d- d- bank account, okay? That ain't true. You know, she then say how um, I just can't believe he spent that much money. Um, and he then say the money that he g- had been giving her was mainly used to get drugs. I said, wait, what? She's like, so you knew the money she was, that you was giving her that she was using, using it to get drugs? And he said, yeah, he said, but you know what I'm saying, I didn't want her to be sick. Like, she was in there sick without drugs, so I would just give her money to get, I said, what? You was her, basically her dealer. You know, because you gave her the money. Girl. Oh, she said, you know what, I'm going to do what I have to do to get Scott up and out the picture, okay? Because he got her on drugs in prison, you know what I'm saying? Who does that? Who supply? Who gives person a person money? To get drugs in prison. I mean anyone who send money to somebody in prison. You don't know what they use their money for. So anybody can be a whole drug supply person in the prison of people. Be I'm saying. But she like I don't want to allow my mama back. I don't want my mom to go back to prison. So I have to do what I have to do. To keep her out. And I was like. But she a whole 19 year old kid. And she's concerned with. You know what I'm saying. Keeping her mom out of prison. And not only that, the fact that Scott supplied her mom with money for the past three years to get high. And I'm like, girl. And so that's how that, that that's how they think in. Now we have Clint and Tracy. So Clint's 37, uh, Tracy's 38. Now she's been in jail for eight years for fake checks, probation violation. And it says also introduction of drugs into the facility because she has some felony charges. It was a whole bunch, it was a whole bunch of shit. Okay, now first of all, Clint looked like he the prisoner. I'm like, he looked like he could be the prisoner, but he's a creepy looking hotel desk clerk. He the kind of hotel desk clerk where you really don't want to know your room number because you just feel like he may come in when you're not there and sniff your panties. 
that's what he looks like. He looks like he's also not all the way there. Like the elevator don't go all like the elevator is like thirteen floors. He go to ten. Like he missing three floors uh, in his mind. Anyway, he brings up how he's been married twice, and how you know what I'm saying he is actually where he works now. His second wife is his actual boss. I said, Lord Jesus. So the ex wife, who's his boss, comes strolling in. <sighs> okay, what you want? What you need? So he's asking the ex-wife, who's his boss, if he can get two additional days off work because he's getting married. Okay, because he's, I met someone and, you know, I'm saying I'm going to meet her or I'm going to get her or whatever. And um, I need a couple more days off work because we're getting married. She's like, what? He's like, yeah, you know, we met six months ago on a prison waiting day, a prison dating website and the ex-wife just looks shocked like she looks shocked as shit like did you really just say that you're meeting this girl at a prison like she was just she was like what and i was like yeah you know she then asked well how often have you seen her like when do you see her he says oh i've never seen her in person like we've only talked on the phone because you know we've only well no he said you know her phone and visitations get taken away so i'm like they must have been pen palling it just sending letters back and forth or whatever like hand written letters he's like yeah when i met her on the little website she was gorgeous um and i i sent her one like i sent her a letter she sent one back so i replied again and then when she replied the second time i was in love i was in love in love in love honey the ex-wife say so you fixing to go marry someone you never met you've never seen Bro, when she said fixing, I say fixing what? Fixing the sink? She said, so you fixing to go meet someone that you ain't met in person yet or whatever? You ain't? I said, Lord Jesus Christ. Um, but she was dead ass serious. Um, because she's like, I'm just shocked that this is what he's doing or whatever. It just doesn't seem like, it just doesn't seem normal. And then, you know, he like, you know, I, she always said that, that I rescued her, but I feel like she rescued me. I was like, y'all both sound crazy. Like, one of the way, it doesn't really matter. You know, but he says that he also admits they don't really have any plans on how they're going to, like, financially support each other. Because the, the, the ex-wife was like, like, is she going to come here? Like, is she going to work? Like, what's going to happen? Like, how are you going to afford, you know, to take care of her? I'm like, and he said, you know, we're just going to take it day by day. We're just going to wing it. I'm like, so y'all have no plan? Who paying for the wedding? I was just so confused. The ex-wife brings up how, you know, well, I want the best for him. You know what I'm saying, but I hope you know that this just this doesn't turn out bad. Like I just don't know. And then you know we then see him go like visit his parents. His parents must like own like a grocery. Store. It was or a restaurant because the mama was like working in the. It was like a restaurant. The mama was working in the kitchen and had him like come to the back while she made him a sandwich. And they went further to the office. And her, his daddy was in the office. I'm looking like they must own that or whatnot. So the mama like, you know, I can't believe you doing this, you know what I'm saying? He's the she's getting out of out of prison on Thursday and I can't believe they're gonna go get married on a Friday. Like it's just kinda crazy, crazy, crazy. So neither parent is happy about what he's doing. The daddy then said <laughs> the daddy like, I think, you know, he's using her that no, I think she's using him. He said, I've seen too many Dr. Fields. No, I've seen too many Dr. Fields. I don't trust her. And I was like, Don't don't the mama then say your daddy just is you know being difficult whatever he she's gonna have to prove herself to him and he said <clears throat> well she's already proved herself to me how you have people kill me when they say oh we're she's they're proving and stuff you haven't met her in person a person in prison can't prove shit to you besides they committed some kind of crime Possibly, allegedly. Um, but I'm like, she ain't proved shit. She can't even. She can't even prove she can keep her temper or or keep the, the lines of communication open because they took away her visitation and her phone stuff. I'm like, girl, you kind of crazy, and he is too. So that's gonna be a pile of crazy just all within itself. And last but not least. Megan and Mike and Michael. Now, when I seen Megan and Michael, when I heard the phone call I say a collect call from a person in Michigan. I say Michigan. They got somebody from Michigan. Oh, bitch. Oh, 
Do I know them? Oh, you never know. And I know someone named Michael who who locked up or whatever, but he's not in Michigan. But I was surprised, like, oh my god, what you know? Anyway, <laughs> um, I was surprised. So Michael is 26 years old. He has been in prison for two years for for probation violations, but he was originally arrested like when he was younger for stealing cars. So that's what he was in, in jail for the first time for the car stealing and he then went back and he's doing two years because he violated the probation from the car stealing stuff. And Megan is twenty eight. Now Megan says they're engaged. Okay, they're wholeheartedly engaged, but she stay in Texas. So she lives in Texas. But I'm like if she lives in Texas, like how would she on the phone with a dude who was in jail in Michigan? I'm like, I mean was he a drug dealer? He was going back I was confused. So she then say they actually met through his cousin. I don't know how she knows his cousin. Maybe his cousin stays in Texas. I'm confused because she didn't go and she didn't elaborate. But she said, yeah, we met through his cousin. His cousin, you know, asked me if he could give him my number so that he could have someone to talk to. And I said, sure. Why not? I mean, she then says that we've been dating for a year and a half. We've been engaged for eight months. He proposed over the phone, and I said, well, what would he propose at? Um, so, we then also find out that she's a virgin. Oh, yep, cool, she untapped. Okay, she said she's a whole virgin. Even though she mentioned how him and her had phone sex, but she's a virgin. So, I'm like, okay, whatever. Um, she brings up how she's just never trusted anyone, and she trusts him, and she can't wait to be with him or whatever. And so, she is flying to Michigan. To get him from the prison in Michigan. And then she's going to take him to New York. Because he's going to be he's paroling to New York. Because his daughter stays in New York. So he's going to New York. So I'm looking like wait. So he's in prison in Michigan. You stay in Texas. He's going to be living in New York. How y'all going to be married? Are you going to move your life from Texas to New York? I was like girl that's a lot to go. Girl. So she then brings up how her family does not know that she's engaged to him, but they do know that she be talking to him, and they don't like it. So her daddy come over. Her daddy not. He like, mm -mm, I don't like it. I don't like it. I don't like it. I don't want her getting hurt. I don't want her getting played. We know how these things sometimes pan out. Sometimes dudes be having four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten girls waiting for them on out day. And, you know what I'm saying, I don't want her getting bamboozled, okay? Hoodwinks. Let us stray, okay? I don't want any of that happens to my baby girl. So, you know what I'm saying? She like, Daddy, let me live my life. I'm okay. I trust him. Like, I love him. We're going to be together, Daddy. We're going to be all the way together. And then um, they also have never been face, been face to face before. She's never went to go visit him um, at all. They've only talked on the phone. I'm looking like, what? Really? Like, how do you really know who he is? Like, I... Mm -mm. Y'all know in these these prisons that you cannot send them videos through that JPEG thing. Girl, bye. Anyway, you know, the daddy, the daddy like, you know what I'm saying? What if it's drama with the baby mama? You know what I'm saying? Because um, cause he got a whole daughter or whatever. I don't care. I'm I'm game for whatever. I ain't really worried about it or whatever. And she does not listen to any of the advice her daddy given her because like it's like it's no doubt in my mind that we will be together forever. And we do see them on the phone together. Be like, hey baby, I love you. You know what I'm saying? One to a hundred. I mean they're gonna be together for a hundred years. All the standard prison talk they have. You know, all the standard prison. I love you. Y'all know I dated the dude in prison. Well, we was together before we went to prison. So my stuff wasn't like prison talk because we was in a relationship for like two years before he went to jail. But still, you know what I'm saying? Dudes get in jail and they get all this lovey-dovey bullshit talk. I, it's a whole story time I got about it. Um. Anyway, we do see her like with her friends picking out like little sexy things to wear and even to how they not, you know, she a virgin and she, you know, even though they had phone sex, she wants to give herself to him. I'm like, girl, you know, she's telling them how she don't care about the baby mama, or whatever. Like she don't, she's a ride or die. She with that man forever. And he come home to her. All right, girl. We then see she's even taking like little online video classes showing her how to move, having sex so she can ride the dick right. I'm looking like, oh, you taking like dick ride lessons on online? <laughs> <laughs> like dick ride lessons online. She was straddling that chair and watching the girl straddle. I'm looking like, just watch porn. Just watch porn. You know? 
anyway, to the same time she meeting with friends or whatever, saying how you saying it's me and him forever. I got him forever. It's just me and him, bitch, bitch. What do we see, bitch? We meet Sarah. Sarah is twenty four, and she's Michael's baby mama. Okay, she's white. Cause Michael and what's the girl name? Michael and uh, what's the girl name? Megan. Michael and Megan are both black people. Okay. But Sarah, who was 24 and the mother of his daughter, she happens to be white. She does live in New York or whatever. And she was like, you know what I'm saying? Um, my name is Sarah. You know what I'm saying? Me and Michael has a, a, a two, our kid is two years old. He's been in prison for like, you know, he's been gone for like two and a half, three years. The math didn't add up a little bit, but I, whatever. I think she may have met him. Like, he's been, he been gone from New York. For three years, like living there, people in prison. I don't know because the girl, the little girl, only like two or three. So I'm, the math, I don't know if she got pregnant right before he left or what happened. Anyway, um, she then said, well, "We've been together for the past six years, and I'm excited to have him home for prison. I can't wait for him to get home." Saying, and we've been engaged since before he went to prison. I said, "Bitch, they got a whole part dog." Dog, bruh, who called the show? This is the, who the fuck called the show? Did Michael call the show? Because or did who did Megan call the show? Did Sarah call the show? Like who called the show first? And now they have both women on the show. Okay, Michael has a woman in Texas and a woman in New York. Waiting for him to come home, and he's engaged to them both. And they do, they, I don't think, I, <laughs> bitch, I said Michael is a girl, but that's what them dudes do, okay? She said, I can't wait for him to come home. I said, Megan gonna be bad, because Sarah, like, you know what I'm saying, that's my baby daddy, bitch, and he come home to New York. And not only that, he's being paroled. To New York, meaning he's probably being paroled to that girl house because that's girl. I said this fool Michael here. This season is gonna be interesting, okay? And then we see the period for the for the you know for the upcoming seasons. We see him with both women. We see him in bed separately with both women. I'm like, we see him coming home. And he's hugging, you know, Sarah. We see him kissing Sarah in the bed. But we also see him in the bed with Megan. I'm like, bitch, how? Who, what, when, where, and why? Girl, girl, girl. This season, this season, this season. I think people saw this show. This season seemed like it's going to be much better than last season. I can't wait. I'm gonna, Y'all going to get all the reviews. Okay? Okay, okay, okay. But let me end it here because I was like, bitch, Sarah, the baby girl, I said, ain't girl. Mm, let me stop right here. Comment below, y'all. Comment below what y'all would do if the man you met on the prison dating website, okay, you've been in a relationship with for the past year and a half. You went and picked him up and a whole nother bitch was there. Picking them up to okay, a whole goddamn carpool. Anyway, I am Jay Lee. This is Jay Lee's Corner. Peace. He's like love, love, love.